So here we are in our R terminal, uh, R studio, and we're looking at uh, using generalized linear models uh, to revisit some of the data that we'd analyzed previously, uh, perhaps using, for example, uh, tests of proportions or non-parametric um, tests. I have a note here for you explaining that generalized linear models extend linear models, which are the ANOVAs that we've been doing. Uh, note that what we've done so far in the linear model actually um, is incorporated in a generalized linear model as well. It would be using the normal distribution as part of the generalized linear model. Generalized linear models also have, uh, besides their distribution they're considering, something called the link function. And that's how the predictors, or the factors, uh, relate to the mean of the response. Um, each distribution in a generalized linear model has a kind of canonical link function that goes with it, and uh, we'll, we'll always use the canonical one. But you, you can look into this further and see that you can actually have different link functions uh, along with different distributions. So the, the, the linear model is a normal distribution with what's called the identity link function. And you can see more about this at the Wikipedia entry for generalized linear models. Our first example is going to use uh, what I previously called multinomial logistic regression. Sometimes it's also called nominal logistic regression. Uh, and that's because we are analyzing nominal variables or categorical variables as a response. We did this in our previous data, uh, prefs ABC sex, where we saw the preferences of males and females for three different websites, uh, A, B, or C. And so this will use the multinomial distribution with the what's called logit link function. And you can look into that further as you like. So let's go ahead and do our reanalysis of this data. We'll store it in a data table that we'll call prefs ABC sex, and then I'll put dot two, uh, just to highlight the fact that we're uh, progressing through our, our code file here, uh, and we're, we're doing this for this data for the second time. Okay, so we'll load that up, and as is our normal practice, we'll view it, make sure it looks correct. We have subject as a column, pref as a column, so the preference they have for their website, uh, and sex as a factor. Um, and our question is, did people's preferences uh, vary by their, their sex? Did males or females prefer different website designs? Uh, we'll recode subject as a nominal factor because it's a number there. And we can do a summary over that table for each of those columns. We can see that we have uh, preferences for website A, uh, 8 people, website B, 21 people, and website C, 31 people. And we have uh, 29 females and 31 males giving us preferences. And we can plot those preferences here and, and see the distribution of A, B, and C for males and uh, what seems to be a different distribution for females. Uh, so males, uh, again, seem to have a preference for website C, and females seem to have a preference more for website B, but with some interested in C as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze these preferences uh, by sex, and we'll use uh, a generalized linear model uh, for multinomial logistic regression. Again, also sometimes called nominal logistic regression. And we'll load in a couple of libraries to help us carry this out. Uh, we're using an, a call that you'll see to ANOVA with a capital A. This is not to be confused with ANOVA uh, with a lowercase a, which is from uh, the basic stats package that comes with R. The CAR library's ANOVA with a capital A uh, is a little bit different and takes a little bit different data. You can look that up and read the help pages for those two calls. Something we have to be aware of is that uh, the default in terms of how this call works to a capital A ANOVA uh, is uh, relying on contrast tests that are not set uh, to be the, the, the kind of the normal way that we'd like them to be. Uh, so we can change how contrasts are encoded uh, with this line here for the sex variable. Uh, you can look into that further if you like, but it's just one of the nuances of the capital A ANOVA call from the CAR library. So we'll see this pattern whenever we're going to use that ANOVA call. Okay, so now we'll run the multinomial logistic regression, and we formulate our uh, relationships here among our 
our response preferences by sex, as we've seen before, um, in using our new data table. And then we will go ahead and issue the ANOVA um, command. Notice that even though it's ANOVA, it's not necessarily producing, it's not producing for us an F test, it's producing a chi-squared result. Um, it's just using ANOVA as a more general term for analysis here. Uh, if we might have had only two categories of response, we might have used binomial regression, another generalized linear model. But because we have three, we're using multinomial. So I make that note there. So that's something you can look into if you have two response categories. So in our uh, result here, we have the omnibus or overall result showing that we have a, a chi-squared uh, statistic here with two degrees of freedom. And we see a significant p-value less than 0.05. So that's saying that it does seem that sex did, in fact, affect the preferences uh, distribution that we have in our data. And we've just seen that with our, our plots. Clearly, by sex, we see differences between these two graphs. So because we have a significant overall test, we can sort of reach in and look a little bit more at uh, these levels individually. Um, and we can do that by looking at how the proportion of responses was within each of the sexes, within men and then women, um, for the different websites and see, did any of those responses deviate significantly from what we would expect by chance? Um, the answer for the men's group, of course, is, is yes. And here's the graph again. Uh, the answer is that they really liked website C and, and really liked meaning that their preference for website C was greater than we would expect by chance. So we'll encode all of uh, those tests uh, in MA, MB, and MC, and then adjust for multiple comparisons as we've done before. And we can see the p-values here show that for A, we don't have a significant result. Neither for B, we, in other words, their preferences is, are within range of what we might expect for this number of males by chance. But for website C, in fact, we do have a significant, in this case, preference for website C. Let's see if, for the females, any of their preferences seem to differ by chance, uh, differ from chance. Uh, and we have the answer already put here for your convenience. They really disliked website A. So they differed by chance in the negative direction. Let's move to the females plot here. Website A was so unliked that it was uh, significantly different from chance. And we run the same analyses here, and we see that that's the significant result there. Their preference for website B was trending towards significance, but is not significant at the 0.05 level. And their website preference for C is about what we would expect by chance. So the short answer is men really liked website C, whereas women really disliked website A. And that's why gender has a significant effect on website preference. OK, let's move now to our second generalized linear model, where we have an ordinal response. We'll use ordinal logistic regression for a Likert-type uh, response, a 1 to 7 scale response. This will actually use multinomial uh, distribution with the cumulative logit link function, just for the under the hood, uh, those of you interested in what's happening under the hood here. So we'll read in our search, scroll, and voice data that we analyzed previously. And since it's our second time, We'll give it a, a dot two in the name. Remember, the dot in R is not a scoping operator like in uh, many languages. It's just a regular character like an underscore. Uh, we can view that data, and we see that uh, we have subject, technique, order, time, errors, and effort. Effort's the one we're interested in. Uh, this was previously a within subject study where they used both searching, scrolling, and voice uh, to find contacts and then rated their effort for those. We're going to recode um, the subjects column to have a unique identifier in each row, which is effectively saying it was a between subject study, not a within subject study. So we do that uh, here. Uh, we also turn subject to a nominal factor. And uh, we can drop the order column because it no longer makes sense. So we set it to null and it disappears. And we can verify the table now. So it has a unique subject ID in each row. It has the techniques then the time taken, errors, and effort column, which again is what we care about, the 1 to 7 ratings. So we can summarize over that table uh, by column and see our output there, as we often do. Uh, and then we can actually familiarize ourselves again with the response 
uh, the effort rating in this case. So uh, we can see in the output down below here that we have um, our, our means and medians for each of the Likert responses. Uh, and it looks like 4.4 for scrolling. Higher was more effort, so search was 3.6 and voice was about 4.4. Um, okay, uh, we can also take a look by uh, means and deviations by each of the levels search, scroll, and voice. Um, and then we can uh, get a sense for the Likert responses on the 1 to 7 scale, which is the x-axis. So here's search, here's scroll, seems a few people thought it was more effort. Uh, and then here's voice. Uh, and of course, the box plot is helpful just to see how these kind of relate. Looks like scroll and search were somewhat similar, at least in their means, uh, but the ratings for voice were maybe a little bit more effortful. Okay, so then we are going to load a couple of libraries for the ordinal logistic regression. Um, and we're going to make sure that the effort column is coded as an ordered column. We need an ordinal response here for this um, call to Polar, P-O-L-R, uh, which is the ordinal logistic regression call to, to work properly. Uh, because we're going to use the capital A ANOVA command, we'll set the uh, contrasts as we described earlier. And then we'll do the ordinal logistic regression. We've stored that result in M, that model, and then we'll, we'll report the ANOVA on that. So our results in the end we see is that in rating the effort of these three techniques, we have our chi-squared result with two degrees of freedom, and we see a non-statistically significant result, a p-value of 0 0.10. So in this box plot, we, we can say the overall or omnibus test has not concluded that, in fact, we've seen significant differences among these levels um, for this ordinal response. And that somewhat makes sense. I mean, we have very similar results for scroll and search, and voice isn't too far away. It was 0.1, so we're in the, in the right direction, perhaps, but, uh, but not a significant result. So we're not warranted in following up with uh, post hoc pairwise comparisons. For completeness, I've included how we would do them, and we've seen this pattern before with the MultComp library, where we specify uh, two key comparisons, meaning all pairwise comparisons in the multiple uh, comparisons procedure call here, adjusted for the home sequential Bonferroni procedure. So this is how we would carry them out, but we're not justified in doing them. So I'm actually going to comply with that and not run the test. Now, if we had a significant overall test or omnibus test, then we would be justified in looking at pairwise comparisons. Finally, let's look at our third generalized linear model, Poisson regression, which happens for rare event data and count responses. It uses a Poisson distribution with the log link function. So we're going to look at the errors response, which was another column in the data we were just analyzing. Uh, this is where we counted the errors people made as they looked up uh, contacts with search, scroll, and voice in a contacts manager. So we'll refamiliarize ourselves with that data again, uh, where we can see the um, the means and standard deviations of that data. Here is the distribution of errors for, for the search approach, for the scroll technique, and for the voice technique. You get a kind of a feel for how things look. Uh, clearly not normally distributed, and we can see are these in fact Poisson distributed? And we can plot and see clearly just from the box plot we have good intuition that there is a difference in the number of errors people are making. Um, but let's make that a little bit more formal. So we will fit a Poisson distribution to the search data and then do a goodness of fit test on that. Uh, and this is um, going to tell us that we have a non-significant p-value, meaning we don't differ significantly from the Poisson distribution. Uh, we can do the same for the scrolling um, data and see we don't differ significantly and then the same for the voice data and we also don't differ significantly. Um, in fact if we go back and look at the voice data distribution this is pretty classic Poisson so uh, it's no surprise that we're we're similar there. Okay so now we'll finally move to the actual Poisson regression uh, GLM analysis uh, we'll, we're going to use the capital A ANOVA call again, so we'll set the contrast as we've described. Uh, and then we use the 
actual direct GLM call, the generalized linear model call, uh, and we indicate we want the Poisson family of um, of analysis. That's the distribution, and it also within it encodes the the default link function, which is the log link. Um, so we'll set that model and report that in Nova, and we'll see that we have a significant result um, from that from that uh, chi squared test, telling us there is uh, a a difference. And if we look at again at the box plots, we would expect there would be obviously a significant difference there. So we have an overall significant test. Incidentally, we can plot the residuals as we've done in the past for the linear model. Uh, um, and we can see that, in fact, they're patterned and do not fall normally about the, 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 the normal line there, uh, the normal distribution line. But here's what's fun about generalized linear models using Poisson regression. There is no normality assumption in such a model. So it's OK that we have data that looks like this. In fact, we wouldn't expect it to fall uh, normally like we would for a regular linear model uh, using an ANOVA. So that's an example of how we can get away from some of those assumptions. Uh, so because we had a significant overall test, <clears throat> we'll go back here and see our box plots, we can conduct pairwise comparisons among the different levels uh, of the technique factor. And we do that, as we've seen in the past, with the MultComp library. And what we can see here is we have um, three statistically significant p-values, all of which relate um, uh, to the pairwise differences here. And that doesn't surprise us. None of these look like uh, they should be similar to, to the other, so we'd expect three significant pairwise differences. And this is reported with a z-value. Uh, so now we've seen three different generalized linear models analyzing categorical or nominal responses, ordinal responses, and uh, Poisson count responses. Let's go to our analysis table and see where this has brought us. Here we are at our table of analyses. And I've highlighted the generalized linear model, or GLM, that we've just seen and used to revisit some of our data. We looked at nominal logistic regression, which we used to analyze uh, categorical responses. We've looked at ordinal logistic regression that we used to analyze Likert uh, scale or ordinal responses. And we used Poisson regression to look at count data analyzing uh, error counts. Technically, generalized linear models are not non-parametric, at least not in the sense that they use ranks like the other non-parametric tests we've seen above. But I've put generalized linear models in this column uh, because we would go to a GLM when we have a between-subject study and we have data that wouldn't normally conform to our usual parametric linear model ANOVAs. Just like the GLM generalized the linear model, we'll now turn to the last row where we can handle within subjects effects and look at linear mixed models and its generalization generalized linear mixed models. We'll go to that next.